Chapter 6. Hear ye now what the Lord saith. Arise, contend thou before the mountains, and let the hills hear thy voice. Hear ye, O mountains, the Lord's controversy, and ye strong foundations of the earth. For the Lord hath a controversy with his people, and he will plead with Israel. O my people, what have I done unto thee? And wherein have I wearied thee? Testify against me. For I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt, and redeemed thee out of the house of servants. And I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O my people, remember now what Balak, king of Moab, consulted, and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him from Shittim unto Gilgal, that ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord, and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He hath showed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee? But to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. The Lord's voice crieth unto the city, and the man of wisdom shall see thy name. Hear ye the rod, and who hath appointed it? Are there yet the treasures of wickedness in the house of the wicked, and the scant measure that is abominable? Shall I count them pure with wicked balances, and with the bag of deceitful weights? For the rich men thereof are full of violence, and the inhabitants thereof have spoken lies, and their tongue is deceitful in their mouth. Therefore also will I make thee sick in smiting thee, in making thee desolate because of thy sins. Thou shalt eat, but not be satisfied, and thy casting down shall be in the midst of thee, and thou shalt take hold, but shall not deliver. And that which thou deliverest will I give up to the sword. Thou shalt sow, but thou shalt not reap. Thou shalt tread the olives, but thou shalt not anoint thee with oil and sweet wine, but shalt not drink wine. For the statutes of Omri are kept, and all the works of the house of Ahab, and ye walk in their counsels, that I should make thee a desolation, and the inhabitants thereof an hissing. Therefore ye shall bear the reproach of my people. And the commandments aren't a set of artificial rules designed to trip you up so that you're constantly in trouble and God can say, Aha! I got you again! They are simply a set of guidelines as how to live your life the very best way possible to have the least problems that you're going to have in this life and have the very best eternity possible. That's what it's all about. We have a kind, wise, loving Heavenly Father who is constantly trying to help us. And if we would stop being really stupid and just listen and do what we're told, we'd all be a lot better off. This world would be a whole lot better place. He explains that sin is a breaking of the divine law. The divine law exists, and breaking the divine law causes a distance between us and God, which God cannot make as though it didn't happen. The only way it can may be made as though it didn't happen is for us to repent. And in the time of Israel and Judah here, they had gotten so careless in their worship that to them, the blood sacrifices, which were supposed to be symbolic of the shedding of the blood of the Savior, were just plain mechanical. Well, you know, we cause sin. Well, we'll take this goat in and give it to him, and that will be a sacrifice for sin. And these people would never, ever, ever understand the one thing that that was all supposed to teach them. That they were supposed to change their hearts, change their minds, change their lives, be better, improve, not do stupid, wrong, sinful things, because no amount, no millions of sacrificed rams, lambs, goats, or anything was going to do anything for them. But as far as they were concerned, 
right up until the Savior came and was crucified and the Romans destroyed the temple as far as these people appeared to be concerned. The thing that made the difference was spilling the blood of animals and burning it on the altar and it didn't make any difference what the person was like before or after they did it. And what the Lord's saying is basically if you don't have a broken heart and a contrite spirit no blood sacrifice is going to be worth anything. All of the sacrifices were symbolic of the principle of the sacrifice of the blood of the Savior. And these people had this for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. And they had prophet after prophet after prophet after prophet coming and telling them all this. And they rejected every one because it required them to think and be honest and be sincere and they weren't interested. Finally, the noblest answer we have had so far in virtually all the scriptures, one of the most noble answers given, uh, explained the necessity of living right and having a broken heart and a contrite spirit because we've done things wrong. And basically he says, Micah says, It has been told thee, O man, what is good and what the Lord doth require of thee, only to do justly and love mercy and walk humbly with thy God. Now those are very few words. The actual fulfillment of that, you are in total control of every day of your life. You are in control of the challenges you will face to that. But you are in control of how you will respond to all of those challenges. You can love good. You can love mercy. You can be good. You can help people. You can walk humbly before God. You have a prayer in your heart 24 hours a day. You don't just have to wait until Sunday, show up and let some priest or preacher or pastor or something stand up and say, now we're going to pray to God. Excuse me. You can say in your heart, Heavenly Father, I don't know what to do here. I need some help. Can you help me find out how to go? That's a prayer. Now, there's formal ones, a little more formal. You end in the name of in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen, because we're told to ask all prayers in His name. We can address Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father, Father which art in heaven, as in the Lord's Prayer. That's what we need to do. Now in verses 9 through 16, the Lord's wickedness, the Lord tells Israel's wickedness before the Lord is that the rich men do violence, they speak forth lies talks about the statutes of Omri. Omri was one, if he wasn't the most wicked of all the kings ever in Israel's history. He was close to it. And his son Ahab and his daughter-in-law Jezebel were not very far behind. And the statutes of Omri were the laws of worshiping idols, sacrificing your children to the idols, and being as morally corrupt, as pornographic, and as violent as it was possible to get. That's one hell of a religion. 